Welcome back. This week, we're going to develop the probabilistic machinery that we need to compute confidence intervals and do hypothesis tests. So we're going to be having a random sample of n observations, and you can think of these n observations as being n random variables. And we're going to be combining them in various ways. You know, we might add them up and divide by n to compute the sample mean. All right. Now, when we do this, we're really studying the joint distribution between n random variables. That sounds like a very complicated problem, uh, but by the end of the week, we're going to have some very elegant results uh, around that th those questions. So. In order to get there, we're going to start very small and suppose that we have two random variables rather than n random variables. If we can, if we can nail this down for two random variables, then, um, then going out to n random variables will be easy. Okay, so let's say we have two random variables. For now, I'm going to call them x and y. Very soon, we're going to call the two random variables x1 and x2. But for this lecture, let's just call them x and y so we don't have to deal with subscripts. This should be a review from probability theory, from your probability theory course. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go fairly quickly. This slide summarizes all the main results that we need for handling two random variables. So I think the easiest way to understand this is with a simple example. and if we can work it out for a simple example, then we can do far more complicated things. Now, uh, I'm just going to note that everything I'm, I, I talk about now, um, on the next slide, we're going to do with data. Okay, so here we have like a concrete data set where we, um, we analyze it. And, and actually, the video with this next page has three concrete data sets. You, you may find it easier to watch that video first. But um, um, maybe not. So, so let's, let's just keep going with this video. All right. So to make this concrete, I, I like to do these in Excel. I, um, I'm, I'm ordinarily not a big fan of Excel. But, um, but for these problems, uh, it's just really nice to be able to see things in Excel. Okay. So here's my simple problem. Let's say that I have two salespeople. Um, this is salesperson X and salesperson Y. And they, um, they go off and they sell things every day. And let's say that on a given day, salesperson X will either sell zero widgets, one widget, or two widgets. Likewise, salesperson Y can sell zero, one, or two widgets. What I have here is the joint distribution between X and Y. So uh, if we go over to our scratch pad for a second, um, what, what, what is a joint distribution? A joint distribution just tells us what is the probability that some random variable x, which is the number of um, widgets sold by uh, you know, salesperson x in a day, by x in a day, uh, so what's the probability that x is equal to a little x and, you could say intersect, uh, y is equal to y. So y is equal to the number of widgets sold by y in a day. Now, we often write this by uh, f at x comma y. So we've got a bivariate function that, um, that gives us those probabilities. All right. So that's what I'm, I have right here. Now, the, the first thing that you need to note about this is that this is a probability uh, function. What makes it a probability function is that, first off, all the probabilities are between 0 and 1. You can't have negative probabilities. You can't have probabilities of 1.5. Uh, and they all sum to 1. So let's just go check that out. Rather than writing all this out, it's much easier to do in Excel. I'm just going to find the sum of all those values, and sure enough, they equal 1. Okay, so we, we could say 
for example, the probability that X sells nothing today but Y sells two is about 5%, uh, and so forth. All right, let's go back to the course packet. The first definition that, that, I, that I'm going to introduce uh, from this, this um, you know, studying two variables is called the marginal distribution. So the marginal distribution is simply what's the probability distribution of X alone? And so the way we, we get to um, uh, the, these, these distributions for X is we just add up all the, um, the values uh, for, for Y. So if my question is, what's the probability that X sells zero units? Maybe, maybe we should do this in the document camera. What's the probability that X sells zero units? Well, there are three ways that X can sell zero units. One is that X could sell zero units and Y could also sell zero units. Or, and so these are gonna be mutually exclusive so I can just add them, the probability that X sells zero units and Y sells one unit, or the probability that X sells zero units and Y sells two units. So what, all I'm doing is I'm adding up the three row probabilities here. So let, let's add those three numbers up. So what is the probability that X sells zero units? Well, it's just the sum of these three things, which should be about 0.35. Likewise, we could ask, what's the probability that X sells one unit? Well, uh, I've set this up so we can just copy. So if I copy this down, notice uh, the probability that X sells one unit is, uh, is also 0.35. The probability that X sells two units in a day is, is 0.3. So what I have in this column is the marginal distribution for X. So how many units will X sell? Well, here's the, here's the distribution of that. Likewise, we could do that for Y. So what's the probability that Y sells zero units in a day? Well, it's just gonna be the sum of these three numbers. And then I can copy this. Now, both of these marginal distributions are probability di distributions, um, and therefore they sum to one. So, we have um, we have just done our, you know, illustrated this concept of a marginal distribution. So the interpretation again is, what's the probability that y is equal to a certain value, or what's the probability that x is equal to a certain value? We've we've just um, you know turn this into a unidimensional problem. I'll, I'll just mention that if we had a continuous distribution instead of summing, we would simply integrate. All right, next, we might wanna do some things that we did you know, back with single uh, variables, like find the mean of X. So I could ask you, how many items do you think X is gonna to sell today? And the answer would just be the expected value of X Likewise, what's the variance of that? And we, we can compute these exactly as we did before. So how did we find means? Well, you just take X times the probability of X. So I, I am going to um, work that out. Here is the value of X. How, how likely is it that X sells zero in a day? Well, 35% of the time he, sell, he or she sells zero. And um, I can just copy this down. So if you wanna go look, uh, this is 1 times 0.35. This is going to be 2 times 0.3. Now, if I add these values up, so let's go do that. This is going to give me the mean of X. So the mean of X is 0.95. Why don't I um, go back to the document camera? So we, we can write this as mu sub X, otherwise known as the expected value of X we just found to be 0.95. All right, good. We could likewise do the same for Y. So this is going to be Y times the probability of Y. Uh, uh, Got to copy that across, and then I can simply add them up to find the mean of Y. So the mean of Y is 1.05. As long as I'm taking notes, let's go over here. 
I'm going to call that mu sub y, otherwise known as e at y, which is equal to 1.05. So our interpretation here is we expect y to sell 1.05 in a day. We expect x to spell, sell only 0.95 in a day. And therefore, we, would, we think y is a little bit uh, better salesperson or y has been, sailed, been um, assigned to a better territory. Uh, anyway, y is selling a little bit more. Now, I also said we should find the variances. I think the simplest way to find the variance is let's just find the uh, square deviation from the middle and then weight it by the probability, just as we did with a single random variable. So let's go do this. So the value x is, um, is 0, stored in b3, minus the mean, which is stored in g dollar 6. I'm going to put the dollar sign there to lock it in. We have to square that and multiply that by the probability of that number of, um, of that square deviation occurring. So I just found that. We can go copy that down. Um, I'm going to go add them up. So let's go find the sum of these values. So the sum of the values equals 0.6475. That would be the variance of x. So let's go write that down. The variance of x, uh, otherwise known as sigma squared sub x, what was it, 0.6475. Well, we can do exactly the same thing to y. So what is, uh, what is that? Let's take our, um, open up a parenthesis here. So y minus its mean. So this is going to be dollar $f7, so 1.05. Going to square that number and multiply by the probability. We can go copy this across and then add them up. We have our variance. So our variance is, um, strangely enough, exactly equal to the variance of, of y. Um, usually that doesn't happen, but just by chance it happened in this problem. So let's go keep track of this. The variance of y is sigma squared y, and this is also 0.6475. So we have now studied our marginal distributions. So we know what the mean of x is, we know that what the variance of x is. Another thing that we can uh, do is understand if x and y are independent of one another. So two um, random variables are independent if the joint probabilities equal the product of the marginal probabilities. So uh, I, I wrote it here using the PDFs, but if you substitute the PMFs, then my statement is right. So if the joint probability is equal to the product of the marginals, you have independence. So let's go, um, let's go try this. This is actually a very important um, uh, thing to do if you um, study the chi-square test of independence. Unfortunately, we're not going to be doing that this quarter, although it's... Um, it's, it's often covered in an intro stats class. So I just say, this is the table that we would have assuming that there's no relationship between x and y. Okay, so this is equal to the, um, the probability of x. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this $f3 times the probability of y, which I'm going to, um, I'm going to have as c dollar six. So I'm locking these numbers in. I'm just taking the product of the marginals. Now at this point I can copy down. So let's just see what happens. If we if we have here, well this is going to be the probability that x is equal to one times the probability that y is equal to zero. So you can see how my, my dollar signs lock those in as they should be. Now I can just copy this whole thing across because I was um, very good with my dollar signs. Let's just go check another one. So what's the probability? This is you know the, the, the probability of um, x selling two and y selling two would be the product of these under independence. Now, what's really important to note here is, 
Well, it's so important, let's just go write it out. Note, this table is not the same as the joint PDF, or PMF in this case, probability mass function. So these probabilities are not the same as these probabilities, which means they are not independent. X and Y are therefore not independent. So that's uh, one way to study independence. Well, let's go back to my, my course packet and look at what else we have. So definition, the conditional distribution is simply the joint over the marginal. So let's go compute these conditional distributions. In the case of a discrete distribution, we can write these uh, as the probability of a certain y given x or the probability of x for a certain y. So let's, um, let's start with the conditional distribution of y given x. So the way I like to think of this is I'm going to tell you a value of x. So let's just say that x is 0. So if x is 0, describe the distribution of y for me. So I'm going to fill those numbers in down here. So uh, we're going to take the joint probability and divide that by the marginal. So the, the, there, there's a 35% chance that x sells 0 today. So if I tell you that x sells 0 today, what, what, what can you tell me about y? Well, it's going to be this number divided by um, $f3. So I'm going to go copy this across. And if we did things right, these should sum to 1, because this is a distribution in its own right. So sure enough, it equals 1. So let's just go um, write out one of these, these conditional probabilities. So we'll, we'll, we'll take 0.57. As, as one of our conditional probabilities. This is the probability that y is equal to 0 given that x is equal to 0. So I've, we, we can think of this as the probability of y equals 0 and x equals 0 divide by the probability that x is equal to 0. That's just the definition of conditional probability. And so this is 0.57. So if I tell you that x sells 0, the probability that y also sells 0 is 57%. So that's literally the interpretation of that number. If I told you that, you know, uh, uh, all right, well, l l let's, go, um, let's go compute the others. I've set this up so we can just copy it down. So if I tell you that, um, that x sold 2 today, so x had a really good day, the chance that y also had a really good day is 67%. Notice that probability is, um, is, is much better, much higher than the unconditional probability that y had a really good day. So the unconditional probability that y had a good day is only 35%, but if I give you this extra information that, hey, x also had a good day, then, um, then, then that increases the, the, um, your evaluation that y had a good day. We can do the exact same thing for x. I think I'm going to need to shrink the screen just slightly so that I can um, fit this in here. So uh, this is what is the, the distribution of x for a given y. Okay, so it's going to be the same um, number, but now we're going to divide by the probabilities of y. So this is going to be $c6, actually uh, c$6. Um, we're locking in y. I want to make sure I did this right. So if I look at the probability uh, for 1, um, uh, we, we did that right. Okay, and I can, um, I can copy these down. 
and these should sum to 1 if I did things right. And sure enough, they sum to 1. All right, so let's, let's, just, um, let's just take one of these numbers. Let's take 0.57 as, as our example again. Um, what does 0.57 tell us in this case? Well, it's the probability that x is equal to 2. So what's the probability that x had a really good day if I tell you that y had a good day? So by our definition of conditional probability, this is just the probability that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2 divide by um, the given. So the given is that y is equal to 2. And so this also happens to equal to uh, 0.57. Now, now the, the interesting comparison here is, uh, you know, the unconditional probability that x had a good day is only 30%. But with this extra information that, hey, Y had a good day today, our evaluation uh, increases. We think, well, X is much more likely to have a good day um, if we know that Y had a good day. All right, let's go back to the um, course packet. We have now found the conditional distributions. Those conditional distributions are extremely useful to us. Well. The things we do with two random variables, to a large extent, parallel what we did with one random variable. The next thing we discussed with one random variable is finding the expectation of some function of random variables, so some function h at x, y. And so remember how we did this for a single random variable. We just compute the function and weight it by the probability. Make sure that you understand that from last, uh, last week. We do exactly the same thing when we have two random variables, except that we have to now sum over both the random variables. If we had a continuous one, it's just the double integral over both x and y. So why might we want to do this? Well, one of the um, reasons why we want to do this is to find a summary of how much these variables go together. And so one summary is called the covariance. So this is just um, how do deviations from x's mean uh, and deviations from y's mean go together. So we're going to find the expected value of how much x deviates from its mean and how much y deviates from its mean. So let's go, let's go try that. So, you know, what, when x is below the mean, does that go with when y is below its mean? If, if that's the case, these products will be positive and you get a positive covariance, positive expected value. Um, if x and y go in opposite directions, this will be negative. Now, there's an important theorem that you would have had back in probability theorem, probability theory which is this covariance is just the um, expectation of x times y minus the products of the individual expectations. So we can think of both this and this as functions of a random variable. So I'm going to compute this both ways. We'll compute it this way, and then we'll also compute it this way. and if that theorem from, from basic probability theorem works, then those two numbers should be equal. So let's go try that. Let me go back to Excel. And um, I, uh, I said, let's, let's find the expectation of x times y first. And so you can think about having some function h of x, y, which is just the product of them. So let's take the value of x which is i dollar 11 times the value of y, which is going to be dollar h 12. So look at how that gets highlighted. Now I'm going to multiply this by the joint probability of x times y, which is c, c3 um, up there. So just go ahead and enter. And now we can copy this down, and we can copy it across. 
Let's go check another value. So let's just take this one. If I did this right, it should be the value of x, which is 1, times the value of y, times the joint probability of 1, 2. And so it looks like I did it right. Now, if I compute the sum of this whole thing, so let's go find the sum of this whole thing, that gives me the expected value of x, y. So I'll just write that up here. The expected value of x, y is equal to that. Let's go find the covariance. So the covariance, so c, x, y, should equal e at x, y minus e at x times e of y. So let's go compute that out. This is going to be e at x, y minus e at x, let's see, where was e at x? It was 0.95 times e at y, which is this number. And so the covariance between these two random variables is 0.3025. Okay, so we can also compute this using the definition. So remember the definition was, let's find how far x deviates from its mean, multiply that by how far y deviates from its mean, and find that expected value. So just to refresh your memory, these are x's, um, these are y's over here, and so Let's go find uh, this, so let's see, this is going to be h, $h19 is my x value. Subtract off the mean, so the mean of x is $g, $6. Uh, Excel will make your head spin. Now let's go do the same thing for y. So this particular y value is i dollar 18, so there's my y value, minus the mean of y. What was the mean of y? It was dollar f dollar six, dollar seven, sorry. Yeah, all right. And then we have to multiply that by the joint probability. Again, that's C3. So we just found, we just typed in the definition. I'm gonna copy this for all nine entries in the table. And if we did this right, when I add them up, so this I'm, I'm evaluating this double sum right now, we should get the same thing we had before, which is 0 0.3025. And thankfully, we do. So 